Okay, we're going to talk about the meaning of slope in this video. We're at 7.4a for Algebra 1. And the slanted side of a mountain is a slope, like skiers go skiing on the slope of a mountain, right? It's a line that's on an angle. And slopes vary by steepness. So this steepness is a ratio of how quickly the line goes up or down. This is very steep, isn't it? And this one's not as steep. It's hardly rising at all, is it? It's got a very gradual rise. And this one is way more steep than this one. See how it's rising quicker on more of an angle than the pink one? Well, the ratio is the slope of the line. And remember, a ratio is a fraction. And we can write a slope as a fraction. The ratio or fraction that we use to find the slope of a line is the rise on top of the run as a fraction. And remember, fractions are little division problems. We read it as rise over run. It's the rise divided by the run. So here's the formula would we would use to find the slope. It's the rise over the run. The rise is for x and y coordinates. You have two coordinates, two ordered pairs. This would be x1, y1, and that would be x2, y2. We choose from left to right. So we do y2 minus y1 as a numerator and x2 minus x1 as the denominator. And the rise is the difference in the y coordinates from each other, and the run is the difference in x coordinates from each other. See? So just by looking at this, if I just had the two points and I didn't know what the coordinates were, I just knew that there were two points on the line, I could see where these two meet to make a triangle. And that would be my run, that would be my rise, and we do rise on top of run, and we could just count where it makes the triangle. See? From this point, we go 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 4 for a rise. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as a run. So it's 4 over 5. Now, we can do the slope form of an equation is y equals mx plus b. And the m represents the slope. Here's our x and y values. And b is the actual y-intercept. It's where the line is hitting the y-axis. Okay, we talked about intercepts before. It's for the y-intercept, it's where the line crosses the y-line, the y-axis, okay? So what we do is we take these ordered pairs, 3 and 2 for our x1, y1, and 8 and 6 for our x2, y2, because we choose from left to right, and we follow this formula. We subtract y2 minus y1, and we get 4, and then we do x2, 8, minus 3. That gives us a 5. So our, our slope is, our rise over our run, is 4 fifths. And we saw that here. It's 4 over 5. See that? So there's a few ways that we could find the slope of a line. We could count the rise over the run and write it as a ratio that we found on the graph. We could use the ordered pairs as two points. And we can use the slope formula to find it. See? Take a look at this one. We've got... For left to right, x1, y1 is 4, 4, and x2, y2 is 8, 7, all right? So we're going to do y2 minus y1, so it's 7 minus 4, that's a 3. And then we're going to do y x2 minus x1, that's an 8 minus 4, that gives us a 4, so our slope is 3 fourths. And we could count it where it makes a triangle here and say the rise is 3 and the run is 4, it's 3 fourths, see? So the rise over the run makes a triangle, doesn't it? And the line makes the hypotenuse of that triangle. It makes a right triangle, doesn't it? It's laying on its side. So what happens if we forget and reverse the order of x1, y1, and x2, y2? Well, it doesn't really matter. You could still find the answer. But it's better to choose your coordinates from left to right and do the formula as it's written. If you make a mistake and you reverse the order of x2, like you say this is x1, y1 and this is x2, y2, you could still do the math. You just subtract x in the same order that you subtract y. So if we did it backwards and did 4 minus 7, see, instead of 7 minus 4, we'd get a negative 3 instead of a positive 3. So if we did that backwards, we'd have to do the x backwards as 8. Instead of 8 minus 4, we'd have 4 minus 8. So whatever is done for the y, you have to do for the x and then it'll still work out. You'll end up with a negative 3 over a negative 4, which comes out to be a positive 3 fourths, okay? 
So always choose your coordinates from left to right, and you won't have to worry about this problem, and you'll be able to follow this formula, okay? y2 minus y1 is the numerator, and x2 minus x1 is the denominator. Now check this out. This is kind of cool. Did you know that you could just look at a line and tell if the number is going to be a positive or a negative slope? Look at this one right here. This is a positive slope. It's rising to the right. And our coordinates are negative 2, negative 5, and 1, 2 as we choose from left to right. When we do our math, we want to have y2 which is the 2, take away y1, which is negative 5. And remember, when you subtract a negative, you add the opposite. So it's going to be a positive 7. And then we've got x2 is a 1, and x1 is a negative 2. So we have 1 take away a negative 2. We're going to add the opposite and get a 3. Look, it is a positive slope. It's a positive 7 over 3. Now, we don't simplify this. This is our slope. We want it to be 7 over 3, because that tells us our rise is a 7 and our run is a 3. See? We want to know that there's 7 going up and 3 going across. So don't simplify that, all right? But it came out as a positive number, didn't it? Now, when it's falling to the right, we're going to end up with a negative slope. So our ordered pairs from left to right are negative 3, 5, and positive 2, negative 4. And when we do the, X, when we do the y2 minus y1, we get negative 4 minus 5. That's a negative 9. And we get 2 take away negative 3, that gives us a 5, and it's a negative 9 fifths. We ended up with a negative slope. It's a negative number. So just by looking at these, you could tell somebody, your teacher or your classmates, I can tell if this is going to be a positive or negative slope just by looking at the line. And they're going to be like, what? And go, yep, watch, check this out. If it's rising to the right, whatever the slope is, is going to be a positive number. And if it's falling to the right, whatever the slope is, it's going to be a negative number. It's really cool. So just remember that. Just by the direction of the line, you can tell if the answer is going to be a negative or a positive number. Okay? So our next video, 7.4b, we're going to talk about the slope of horizontal and vertical lines. They don't even have a slope. They're going straight. They're going straight up or straight sideways. So what would their slope be? And if you want to go back to watching graphing horizontal and vertical lines or graph using intercepts or about linear equations, there'll be description, there'll be uh, links in this video's description. And I'm also going to put a link to my grade 8 math linear equation playlist. That might be useful to you, okay? Because there's lots of stuff in here that we haven't even covered yet. So if you want to move up, you can watch those, all right? Because my grade 8 math has a lot of algebra in it, all right? I hope this was helpful. I hope you remember that if it rises to the right, it's positive, and it falls to the right, it's negative. Okay? I'll see you next video. Bye.